Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is day five of the Lego Daily Challenge. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about this one. Today, I have a, a bit of a rest day. I had a seven mile jog, uh, nothing too intense. So just kind of keep it light, keep it easy. Tomorrow is the day that I dread, which I have uh, a 10 mile tempo one, which is, uh, it is what it is. We're, 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 we're getting to the marathon time soon. So yeah. Anyway, today's. Well, I mean, it's going to be 2028. 20, Find missing observations. Let's take a look. You have an observations of n plus m. Don't know why the two were about six sided dice, each face with number one to six. N of the, oh, okay. N of the observations went missing, and you don't have the observation m rows. Fortunately, you have calculated the average value of the n plus m rows. You give an integer array uh, rows of length m, where rows of i is the value of the i for observation. You're given Two integers mean an n. Uh, n is additional. Okay, so it's not the total. We turn the array of length n containing the missing observations such that the average value uh, of n plus m rows is exactly mean. If there are multiple right answers returning any of them, return any of them. I don't know why I said that a little bit weird. If no such array exists, return an empty array. The average value of an, a set of k numbers is the sum of the numbers. Okay, I mean, they, okay. They, they actually define average for you, which is kind of nice because you know that one of my uh, pet peeve or something that I complain a lot of on these videos is that they don't define things, which, you know, even average could mean double uh, a number of things, right? But, uh, but yeah. Okay, so let, let's take a look. I mean, I think, I, I honestly, I do have an idea already, right? Um, the thing is that, so, yeah. Um, yeah, so, so, okay, so there are a couple of ways you can phrase this, right? So, yeah, so, um, first, I want to uh, check whether it is possible. Maybe you don't have to do it first, but I, that's that's the way that I would like to kind of break it down. I think for me, um, these kind of, this is similar to yesterday's in that it is a construct, uh, constructive algorithm, meaning that you're trying to co construct a solution, it may or may not exist. Um, the way that I want to think about is just impossible cases first. Um, if you have solved similar problems before, sometimes you are able to kind of build that into your algorithm. Like your algorithm already assumes different things, so that if it doesn't work, it you know something like that. But but definitely when you're exploring uh, new problems that you're not confident about, it's okay to kind of break these problems case by case, right? And how do I know that this is constructive? Because they t tell you to construct a solution in which, you know, matches something, right? Um, so, okay, so kind of, and I think a lot of it, um, I don't know if I would say is obvious. Um, I don't know if I would say that. It's just that uh, it's something that comes to me, the first in mind, is checking whether it's possible, right? Um, or maybe the inverse of that, which is checking whether it is impossible. Um, so basically, we have n. So we have uh, yeah. So we have so total is equal to the sum of the rows, right? So yeah, and then the mean we have some number, and n we have some number. Okay. So uh, and that's that's actually uh, I, I like my n's and m's kind of in the cap, but yeah, m is equal to length of rows, right? So then, okay, so what does the mean mean, right? So the mean is equal to um, the total over, not this total, yeah, okay. Let's add in a comment, right? So the mean is equal to some total uh, over n plus m, so to total over um, all the new ones as well, right? Um, this The way that this is phrased, maybe that's fine, maybe it's a little bit awkward, I don't know, but I want to def I want to put everything on the same side, right? So, uh, or all the known variables on the same side, we know we're given the mean, we're given the n, we're given the m, right? Um, so, uh, I mean, maybe I could rephrase, rewrite this so that it's a little bit clear, which is um, so total um, m, right? So maybe total is equal to total m plus total n, right? Uh, for some total n, and we don't know what that is necessarily. But, uh, but yeah, so then we have total m plus total n uh, over this thingy, right? And we do know most of these things, right? We know that mean is equal to, oh, sorry, we multiply um, n plus m on both sides. You have uh, this thing, right? Um, we already know total m because we just calculated. it. And in fact, I don't know that the rows matter um, that they give it to you, but yeah, you know. So you can subtract it on both sides. So then now we have mean 
duh, 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 uh, minus total m is equal to total n, right? And this is just a number that we can calculate, so this is a constant. Um, so then so then now we ask ourselves, is this possible, right? So we can actually write this code out, right? So total n is equal to mean times n plus m minus total m, which everything, you know, we already know everything, right? So we're just kind of manipulating the formula here um, that we're given, right? Okay, so then is this possible? Well, this is possible if... Um, so what are the range of the things that we can do, right? So we have n numbers. So that means that if um, the range of possibilities that we can get from our, our n rows is that they're all ones, so we have 1 times n, or maybe n times 1. I know that it equals to n, but I just want to be, uh, you know, I just want to, I think this is more clear. Um, it's less than or equal to total n, or less than you go to n over 6, right, or times 6, right? So this is the range of possibilities, right? Um, yeah. Uh, so if this is not the case, so maybe you can do an inverse of this. If this is not the case, then, well, we can really, because if it's lower than n, then we just, we have too many dice to roll. Um, and if it's greater than n times 6, then we don't have enough dice, right? So then we can, so that's not possible. You can probably do some math to prove that it's always possible if it's in this range. Um, but you can also, you know, prove by construction, right? You can prove by always providing an answer. So, okay, so then what would the answer be, right? Um, there can, probably right now there are a couple of ways you can write this. It, um, really, you can do anything. Like off my head, I have like two or three different ways, right? One is just, um, you know, take the remaining, so we have the total n, we, we take an average, you do a mod, a mod diff thing. Um, and then just distribute it, which is fine. That's one way to do it. Um, another way, I think I'm going to write this way because I don't know. It's the, my first idea. But with these construct, uh, construct diff algorithms, um, they're not always only one way, especially for more difficult ones because, you know, it's just, yeah, there may be different ideas, but they all do the same thing as long as it satisfies or the condition. And for this particular one, if there are multiple answers, any of them is fine. You know, you can imagine that there might be additional constraints, right? Like, um, what is the lexicographically smallest or earliest um, result or something like that? So if there's uh, additional constraints, obviously you have to abide by them and come, come up with an algorithm that construct them in th that way. But for this one, we don't appear to need to. So the way that I would maybe think about it is that I would just uh, do, 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 right? So I just pretend every, all of them are ones. So n, or, uh, or we have total n, uh, or, um, yeah. I mean, so needed is equal to total n, um, and we construct it so that n of them are, are ones, so then we subtract n, right? So then, um, yeah, so then now we can say maybe uh, for i in range of n, it, you know, uh, it doesn't matter, um, but n, n sub i, uh, maybe we give all of it if we can, right? So it's equal to, uh, and actually, I was trying to think about a, one, a cool one-liner, but we don't even need to do that, right? So we just say, say that, um, say delta is equal to, um, mm, let's just say min of 5 or uh, needed, right? Uh, yeah, needed to distribute, right? I say 5 because we already have 1 inside this thing, right? And... We start with one, I guess I didn't talk about this, but we start with one because that's the minimum you can do on each row. So that's why we want to start there. Here we say delta is you go to either min or needed. So then now we add the delta and needed, we subtracted whatever we just took away. So basically it just gives it up to five because then now you have a six. And you know, that's basically the idea. Then we can return answer away and there we go. We should be good. Yeah, let's give it a quick submit. Apparently I did this three years ago, um, 16, 19 day streak. And that's pretty much the idea. I wonder what did I do last time? Oh, I did do the diff mod last time. That, I mean, that's not a bad solution. You can watch that video too. Uh, probably, I, I don't know. I don't know if I did a good explanation, but I probably did okay. Um, yeah, don't know why this, I mean, 
I wouldn't worry that much about like the com the timing and stuff like that. It's not a big deal. Um, the reason is because we know the complexity, right? Uh, this is going to be O of n. Uh, for n is ten to the fifth. I guess we could have terminated earlier. So I don't know. So maybe you can write it if needed. Is um is equal to zero? We break. I mean, I don't know. Is that that uh much faster? It's not really. Eh, I don't even know if it's that big of a deal. Um, but eh, it's like well, apparently that went from ten percent to seventy percent. So I guess that point one three second is a lot. But in any case, I you know as you get it doesn't like it's not a real difference, right? It's going to be O of n both in time and space because of this. Uh, and I guess this is O of m as well, just for the input. But keeping in mind that n is not the size of the input, so it is technically exponential um, because, um, yeah, n is, the, the, it depends on an input in which our output is exponential to, to the size of the input. And the size of the input for the number n is the number of bits, which is log the number n which means that the size is actually 2 to the n. Uh, but yeah, but I mean, you know, uh, it's not a huge deal. Uh, but yeah, uh, that is all I have for this one. Um, I am going to do a bonus problem after this, I think. So definitely stay tuned if you want to solve an extra problem. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Have a great hum day, or at least in here in New York, it is Wednesday. So for me, it's a hum day. But yeah, stay good, stay healthy, take your mental health. I'll see y'all later and take care. Bye-bye.